Go. Hi, my name is Michael Donahue. I'm here today with my family. Um, over here we have my sister. Over here we have my mother. And we're here today to talk about garden. Now I'm going to backtrack a little bit from my original outline on this. Uh, I felt that it was too robust and I also felt that it was illogical to proceed with how to gardening before you start tackling the question of why to garden. Um, for me, uh, I was a 40-year-old plumber, 46-year-old plumber. Um, I had been doing it for 20 years. I've uh, lived most of my life in, life in big cities, cities like Kansas City, Seattle, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and that's what I enjoyed. I enjoyed the hustle and bustle of the big city. I enjoyed having entertainment at my fingertips, uh, having everything I wanted within a short walk or bus ride away. Um, that for me was perfect. So you can imagine the culture shock I experienced when I injured my neck and I moved here to Southeast Kansas. <clears throat> it was uh, an incredible, incredible strain on, on my, my mental faculties, really, um, because it was such a different kind of atmosphere. Uh, I bounced off the walls for two and a half months um, out there in Crowsburg, Kansas, uh, not knowing what to do or where to do it. And it's only because of my mom, my mom's insistence and, and, and persuasion, uh, she kept talking about and trying to get me involved with gardening, um, that I actually did jump into that and I found out how fulfilling it is and how cathartic. And when we talk about the catharsis, what it means is uh, basically is a peace and wellness of being. Uh, and I, when it, what I felt when I started gardening was this complete, utter, head-to-toe change. Um, it's called re-socialization, and that's, that's going to be a, plug, a little plug from Mrs. McAllister in the social, sociology class. We're learning about that uh, this semester. It's when your attitudes completely change about something. Now, <clears throat> I firmly believe gardening is for everyone. Uh, I used to call people that I knew that were gardeners, they were either uh, retired folks or what I call weenies, I'd call them greenies. But gardening is not just for greenies anymore, it's for your family. I don't care if you're just out of school, if you have a young family, if you have a family with teenagers or you're retired, gardening has something that is cathartic and off, uh, offers for, for all, all of those situations. Um, we're going to start with the, the mental catharsis, catharsis first. When you get on your hands and knees and you start digging in the dirt, you, you become in the moment. No longer is your brain worried about the different things. Of, um, and no longer are you bouncing off the walls. Um, you, when you put your hands on the plants, you have to live in that moment. You have to be right there and be, be caring and attentive to what you're doing. This is very mentally beneficial for anybody. And it teaches you how to focus. It teaches you to focus your energies. And you start noticing within days how you don't, or you're not concentrating anymore on what's left out of your life. You're starting to look forward to what is in your life. What is going to happen next with this fruit? What are these vegetables? What's going to happen next? Um, after that, we have the physical catharsis. Now, that's pretty self-explanatory. The bending, the lifting, the digging, um, the walking back and forth, the carrying of the soil. Uh, this is all, you know, really just uh, so beneficial for your body. Um, when I began gardening, I was 305 pounds, if you can Imagine me being much fatter than that. Um, I lost weight. I got down to all the way down to 235 pounds by the middle of that by the middle of that first summer. Now I gained some of that back in the winter time when there's no no activities to do. I mean, and, and generally we don't do a whole lot of activities in the winter time around here. But as soon as spring rolls around, it starts that weight just starts falling off. And I anticipate that uh, this summer will be like the last two summers. I'll be back down to 235 and in great great shape. Uh, that is if I'm dedicated to doing it and I keep my mind occupied with doing it. So the physical catharsis that you get, the physical well-being is, is um, it's just unimaginable. <clears throat> this is something spiritual catharsis that we don't talk about much in, the, in our daily goings on in life. But um, I can tell you that the, one of the things about gardening is I have never been as close to God as I have when I've been in the garden on my hands and knees participating in creation with my creator. There, there's just nothing like it. And you find yourself, when you're, when you're spending time out there sitting on a bucket weeding or, or uh, pre-planting your garden, you find yourself talking to God more. You, see, you find yourself singing praises to him. And even sometimes you find yourself arguing with him like David when things don't go right. Why, God, is there no rain? You know, where did the sun go today? Lord, what are we doing here? I thought we were in this together. I mean, and 
I tell you what, I firmly believe that God would rather have us arguing with him than not speaking to him at all. That he would rather have us disagreeing with him than going to nightclubs and, you know, uh, going, going to, uh, you know, restaurants and, and hanging out with people maybe we shouldn't be hanging out with. I believe that firmly that he would rather have that kind of attention than no attention at all. So the, the spiritual aspect of it, you get such spiritual growth, and I think this is something that you can share with, with children and with your families, with your friends, and you just get out there in the garden and you can see, you can, you can feel that it's palpable um, how, how the spirit comes together with you. Now, before I leave, I've got a couple of resources here to start off with. When you start to plant a garden, and that'll be for next time, um, there, there's a few books here. It's The Vegetable Gardener's Bible by Edward C. Smith. Um, a tremendous resource. I'd suggest everybody pick that up. For planting the garden, I, I haven't found a better book than this. Um, it's like a coffee table book. It's pretty, but it is so packed with information that um, it'll answer just about every question you have about what you want to have and how to plant a garden, whether you want a, 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 a pretty uh, a beautification project or if you want to have um, a functional project with vegetables, this will tell you how to do it. And for the last, this will give you some ideas of what kind of plants that you want in your garden. It's landscaping with perennials. Um, like I said, this was by Roy Strong. This one is uh, Rodale, Successful Organic Gardening. And uh, once you become a greenie, uh, which I am, I'm a card-carrying member now, I guess, um, you start appreciating organics and what you're putting in your body. And that would fall under your physical uh, uh, catharsis as well. So again, my name has been Michael Donahue. Um, I know that this diverted from the original outline a little bit, but I think it's a better place to start when we're talking about gardening.